Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my XML video tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about entities and also review a lot of what we've done already. Now, if you didn't see the previous tutorials, definitely check those out, and I provide a link above to those. And this is where we are left off from our last time. This is the document type definition that we created previously. And then we went and created an XML file, and it went and automatically populated it with all this information. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my document type definition here and make a couple changes and explain what an entity is. You can basically use an entity to create shortcuts in your DTD files. And just like we had previously, whenever we would type in, this is an entity right here, this is less than. Now, whenever I would type in less than on a computer, it's going to replace it with the less than sign, just like we did previously. Now, you can come in here and make a whole bunch of your own personal entities that are quite useful. And you can pull data in and replace those codes either directly inside of the document type definition or from an outside file. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is what is called a parameter entity. Let's just jump right here. Now throughout this document type definition we are constantly typing in PC data. So what I'm going to do here instead is create a parameter entity that's going to make it very easy to replace that with a simple code. And to do so you're just going to type in entity right like that and then you're going to put in a percent sign and then I'm going to put in PD and then inside of the quotes you want to put in whatever you want PD to replace. And we're just going to do that and like this and close it off with a bracket and now anywhere we want to have PC data show up we can just simply come in here and put a percent sign PD and a semicolon and it's going to automatically throw that in and I could do that over and over again within this whole entire document type definition PD and a semicolon now, I'm not going to go through and do that over and over and over again we're just going to move on here let's come down to the poster area now let's say that I would like to have all of this information right here actually contained in a separate file well I'm going to do that first we're going to go over here to source in my little folder that I got here. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go new. Come down here to other. Now by default inside of Eclipse, inside of the XML folder, there is no entity file. So if you want to create one, you have to come up here under general and then just click on file. And then I'm going to call this TV shows 5.ent and then click finish. All right, now that we have that file open inside of there, we're going to select this guy and copy it and then jump over into this entity file. And I'm just going to paste it down inside of there. Now, another way you can assign attributes instead of typing all of this out is to do it all inside of one tag. So to do that, I'm just going to come inside of here. I'm going to get rid of these closing brackets. And then just to make it nice and easy to see, instead, I'm going to put a reference like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with width and height, and then finally show ID. Now that I have that all set up, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to jump back into my DTD file, and I can actually get rid of this all together, right like that, and then I'm going to type in entity, and a percent sign again, and I'm going to say poster, then I'm going to say system, and I'm going to grab that entity file. So TV shows 5.ent, and there you go, and there is my entity file, and it's going to pull it in there just like it was already in there previously. And that is also known as a parameter entity. Remember, anytime you see a percent sign, that's what it means. It's a parameter entity. And then to get everything to actually show up here inside of this DTD file, we're going to put a percent sign, poster, and then a semicolon. And now it automatically is going to go in there. Now you can also define what is called a general entity in a DTD file. And those can be used in the XML file rather than just in the document type definition. Remember, parameter entities are going to be used in the DTD file, while general entities are are going to be defined inside of the DTT file, but they are going to be used inside of the XML file. So let's just scroll down here and create one. Now let's say that I wanted to create shortcuts so that whenever I would type out, for example, great, that a sentence would show up rather than just the word great. Well, I'm just going to go in here and say great. And I could define this for all my different shows of, as a rating system or something like that. And I could say this show was great, put an exclamation mark in there, and close that off. Now anytime that I would, inside of the XML file, put an ampersand inside of there, followed by the word great and a semicolon. Instead, this sentence right here is going to show up inside of the XML file. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works here in a second. And I can also go and create external entities that are general entities. And how I'm going to do that is again type in entity. Let's say I wanted to do like a disclaimer or something like that. I'm going to call it TV disclaimer. And then I'm going to say this is a system file. And let's say it's called TV shows disclaimer.ent. And I'm going to copy this guy so I have it. And then I'm going to go create it. So jump back over into source. Click on that. File new. Going to click on other. In this situation I'm going to leave it just as file and click on next. Paste that inside of there. And then click finish. 
Now in this situation, I'm going to type in TV disclaimer, right like that, get a closing tag in there. And then inside of here, I could say something like all characters fictitious. I think I spelled fictitious right. All right, now if I save that, I'm automatically gonna be able to use that entity inside of my XML file. Let's get rid of all this extra white space because we're not gonna need this anymore. And all the code and everything you see here on your screen is available in a link underneath the video. So let's file save that and I'll jump back into tvshows.xml. Now we already have the document type definition already set up here, but I'm also going to hook into an XSL file that is going to parse all this information and display it on the screen. So I'm gonna come in here and link to that guy. I'm going to type in XML, style sheet, type is equal to text, XSL, H reference is going to be equal to, and I'm going to tell it which XSL file I'm going to be using, and it's going to be called TV Shows 5xsl and then close that guy off like that. And then I'm going to come in here and start plugging in all my information. So I'm going to give this an identification number, and I'm going to type in Mars, release date 2008, country. It's going to be US. Network's going to be ABC. Then I'm going to change this to million. And then I'm going to bounce out into another file and pull all this other information in. And there you go. I populated it with all of the information that we previously went over in the past tutorials. Now I'm going to jump in here and actually use the entities that I defined inside of this DTD file, meaning these guys right here being great and TV disclaimer. I'm going to come in here and throw them in the XML file. I'm just going to throw them at the end of the description. So let's say I wanted to say that I thought this show was great. Well, I'm just going to type in great like that, and a semicolon, right like that. That's all I need to do. And then if I also wanted to throw in the disclaimer inside of the XML file, I'm just going to type in ampersand again, TV, disclaimer, like that, and then end that with a semicolon. And there you go. That's how you pull in all those different entities. So we're going to file save that, and then I'm going to create my XSL file that's going to allow me to display all this information on the screen. So we're just going to go into source again, click on that, new, other. And then in this situation, we do have the capability of using an XSL file. So click on that and then next. And then down here, we're going to actually create it. I'm going to call it TV Shows 5 again, XSL. Click finish. And there you go. It automatically threw all that information inside of there. Now again, I'm going to come in here and tell it to translate this into HTML. So XSL output method is equal to, and this is going to be HTML. Close that off. And I'm going to get rid of this all together. And then I'm going to start defining my HTML file. HTML file, I mean. And there's the head section. And then inside of the body section, I'm going to want to cycle through everything and display a whole bunch of different things on the screen. So we're going to use for each again, just like we did before. And I'm going to say select is equal to TV show forward slash show. And then I'm going to sort everything out. Select is equal to, I'm going to sort everything based off of the name of the show. Order, I'm going to put in ascending. But like I said before, that is the default. And data type is going to define what this name is, which is going to be text so that it knows how to properly sort everything. And then I'm going to put everything inside of paragraph tags and then just start throwing some information out. So remember XSL, you're going to be using value of a whole bunch of times. Value of select is going to be equal to the name for our television show. And I'm going to be copying this because I'm going to be using it over and over and over again. Was released in, jump to the next one, drop that in there, type in release, buy, drop that in there, changes the network throw in a period. And then in this guy, this is going to be description, which it's also going to throw in all of my entities on the screen. And then I'm going to end my paragraph tag like that and create another paragraph tag. That, I'm going to type in viewers, million people, and the year in which it was canceled. And then if I wanted to also throw in an image again, very easy to do. Just go image. This is just going to prove that the poster entity that I created is actually going to work here. Remember, you're just going to get a hold of the attribute that is called source in this situation. And then I'm just going to say that I want source to have the value of whatever poster has as a value. And then the attribute closes itself off. And then let's say after the image, I want to throw a break statement in there. And there you go. And everything else is exactly the same. And there you can see if I go in here and actually execute this guy that everything shows up exactly like we went and typed in here on the screen with all the images and all of the different entities that we went and threw in there. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.